Now I get to tell a fun story. The relationship between heat and work was initially proposed in the 1940s by Joule. Now, there's two stories about Joule and how he came to this insight. One is that he observed when people were machining cannon barrels, a lot of heat was generated, and there was a lot of work done, and so maybe the work generated the heat, or the, there was a relationship between work and heat. Well, this is ridiculous because people were b making cannons long before uh, 1840. The other story, which is probably just as untrue, is that Jewel, on his honeymoon, took his wife to a mountain uh, uh, resort, and they were, they were sitting at the, uh, the bottom of a waterfall. And he had this wonderful idea, and that was the water at the bottom of the waterfall probably going to be hotter than the water at the top of the waterfall. So he grabbed his thermometer and, and went and made a couple of measurements and discovered the first law of thermodynamics. In fact, the water at the bottom of the waterfall is hotter than the water at the top of the waterfall. And the idea was that gravity did work on the water in falling, and that work led to the generation of heat. There, if you think about this, you, you probably can come up with several other ideas for how the water at the bottom might be warmer than at the top. I mean, it's flowing fast at the top, and it's sort of pooled at the bottom, and there's sunlight and all sorts of things that could uh, make this a coincidental as opposed to an insightful observation, but it's a good story. Jewell decided that there must be a direct relationship between work and heat. They are the same quantity. They are both forms of energy. And so we have this cartoon. Again, we have an open beaker and a candle, and we're putting uh, only heat into this beaker. And the temperature goes from T1 to T2. And delta T is given by the heat, which has to do with how much of the candle burnt, divided by the constant pressure heat capacity. Now, you could do a similar sort of thing, but instead of having a candle, you have a paddle wheel, and the paddle wheel is spun by a weight that's dropping from here to here. So w this weight is being spun. Now, I'm really fantastic in drawing this mechanical device, but you can imagine that dropping a weight can cause a paddle wheel to turn. And we know about gravity, and we know about work. Uh, so if you're, doing, uh, if you're doing physics, work is the integral of force dx, x1 to x2, right? That's work. Now, gravity, well, force is equal to mass times acceleration, and the acceleration due to gravity is g. The force, as this weight drops, is constant, and so the work is just going to be mgh, where this is h. So it's a trivial matter by looking at what is the weight and how far does it drop to say, okay, how much work is done by the paddle wheel. And this is in an isolated, in a uh, adiabatic container. All the energy that is inserted into this, which might be turbulence initially, becomes heat. Or it raises the temperature. And so, uh, again, we see a temperature increase, and we know the work. And the temperature increase, uh, it's a constant pressure thing. And so we now have two observations. The same temperature increase, work and heat, and we have a relationship between heat and work. 